For this project, I'm using a weight 4 yarn as well as a 6mm hook. To get started, I'm making a slip knot and then I'm going to create a chain that measures from underneath my armpit, sort of on the side of my body, to the center of my chest. So if you guys want a reference for this size, to make a size large or extra large, I did 30 chains. Now at the end of my chain, I'm going to chain three and then yarn over and place a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through the last two loops on the hook. Then I'm just going to continue placing one double crochet into each chain until I get to the end. To get to the end of the row, I'm going to place my final double crochet into that last chain. And then I'm going to turn my work over and chain three to start the next row. So I'm just going to be working in double crochets for this whole project. So I'm going to place a double crochet into the next stitch and into each stitch until I get to the end of the row. To get to the end of the row here, I'm just going to place my double crochet into that last stitch and then my last double crochet into the top of that turning chain from the previous row. So I'm just going to carry on like this, making each row of straight double crochets. And I'm going to continue this on until I get to the point where I want to start my decreasing for the neckline. So for my top, I did this for 18 rows or until the piece measured to be 10 inches. So now we're going to start decreasing to form the neckline. So to do this, I'm going to start my row by chaining 3, and then I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2, yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all 3 loops on the hook. After my decrease, I'm going to double crochet all the way along till the end of the row. So I finished that row, I'm just going to turn over, chain 3, and carry on double crocheting as normal until this time I get 3 stitches from the end of this row. So now I'm at the last 3 stitches, I'm going to place a decrease, I'm going to yarn over, Insert my hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then I'm going to place one double crochet into that chain three from the previous row. So we're just going to continue decreasing on this side to form the neckline. So I'm going to place decreases only on this side and then double crochet the rest of the row. So I'm going to do this for 11 rows so that I have 11 rows total for the decrease of my neckline. So now that I have my decrease rows, I'm just going to continue up the front until I get to the shoulder seam. So for this, I just want straight rows of double crochet back and forth. So I'm going to do 9 rows of regular double crochets until I get to the shoulder seam. Thank you. 
Once I have that, I'm just going to fasten off at the top here and set this aside and make one more piece exactly the same for the other side. So for the back of this top, it's going to be worked in one big rectangular piece. So to make the back, you're just going to chain twice as much as you did for the first half and then work in straight double crochet rows until you get the same height as the front piece. And once you have all those three pieces, we're going to place the front onto the back and join them at the shoulder seams. So to do this, I just like to take my yarn and make a slip knot. And then I'm going to join the two pieces starting at the very corner. So I take my hook and I place it through the top of that chain three and then the top stitch on the other side, which is also the top of the chain three for this side. And I'm going to take my yarn and pull it through and secure it with a slip stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch into each stitch until I get to the end of the seam here. So just make sure to go through each corresponding stitch and slip stitch through. You can join your pieces however you like, this is just how I prefer. You can also do it with a darning needle and just sew the seams together. This is just the way I find to be the easiest for me. So once I'm at the end here, I'm just going to fasten off and do the same thing for the other seam. And when you flip it over, you can see the seam's nice and flat on the outside. Alright, so now to work on the sleeves. So I tried on the top at this point and marked out where I wanted the sleeves to be. And then we're just going to work the sleeves back and forth from this point. So they're just going to come straight off the main piece of the top. So I'm just going to take my yarn and attach it here. For the sides, you're going to place one double crochet in between these posts and then two into the next stitch if that makes sense. So we're going to place one into these posts, one into the post next to it, and then there's a little space above the post where we're going to place one there as well. So we're kind of alternating between placing one double crochet and two double crochets so that we can have nice and even space stitches. So I'll show you guys what I mean. So I'm going to secure my yarn, pull it nice and tight, and then I'm going to chain three to be my first double crochet. And then I'm going to yarn over and go with a double crochet into the next space here. And then I'm going to yarn over and this is where I'm going into the top of that post top space of that post and then the next one into the post and then for the next one it's going to be into the post and then one into the space above that post so when I get to the seam here I'm just going to place one double crochet into the seam so that I don't have a gap at the top so just kind of wiggle in somewhere there wasn't really a space for it I'm just gonna place one there to kind of close the gap between each side and then I'm gonna come back down the other side of the sleeve placing again my double crochets evenly spaced one into those posts and one into the space above the post so alternating kind of placing one and then two and then one and then two all right after that first row I'm just going to turn my work and place one double crochet into each stitch from the previous row. After those two rows of double crochet, I'm going to do a decrease row. So I'm going to place a decrease at the beginning and end of this row. 
and for my decrease I yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. And then I'm going to double crochet until I get three stitches from the end of this row and I'm going to place another decrease followed by a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then once again, placing my last double crochet so that the stitches are nice and even on the end. So for the sleeve, I'm just going to repeat this pattern all the way until I get the desired length. So I'm going to do two straight rows of double crochet followed by one row of decrease. And when I got to the top here of my sleeve, it was as narrow as I wanted it to be, but not quite as long as I needed it to be. So I added just two more rows of straight double crochet. And that's the sleeve. So now I'm going to fold the top in at the shoulder seam, making sure that the right side is facing in. So I'm going to do the same as I did before, just grab my crochet hook and I'm going to slip stitch my seams together. It's a little bit different working up the side of the top because we have those posts again as opposed to actual stitches. So I'm going to join these together in the very corner and then I'm going to have to work in those posts and the space above those posts to crochet them together. So I'm just going to find each of those posts and each of those post spaces and I'm just going to carefully slip stitch all the way along the side until I get to the armpit. And then once I'm at the armpit, I'm just going to continue down the sleeve. So I'm going to place one more slip stitch here and then continue down the sleeve. Once I'm at the end of the sleeve here, I want to make sure I place one last slip stitch into those final posts and then I want to make sure that I also grab the very corner of the sleeve so that it comes together nicely and the stitches are even at the top. Okay, then I just fasten off and I'm going to set that aside for now. Now I'm going to work all the way around the top with one round of single crochet and I'm going to be placing the ties at this point as well. So I'm going to start in the bottom corner here just securing my yarn. And I'm going to chain one and place one single crochet into the same space. The chain doesn't count as a single crochet, it's just how I like to start the single crochets. So that counts as one single crochet there. I'm going to place one single crochet all the way along the bottom of this top. So we're working kind of into the bottom of our original foundation chain. So just find those spaces and place one single crochet all the way across. Once I get to the opposite corner here, I'm going to place two single crochets into this very last stitch so that I can create a turn for the corner. Then I'm going to single crochet all the way up the side, doing the same method as before, alternating between one and two double crochets. So one into each post and then one into each post space.
I'm going to continue this until I get to the stitch before where I began the decreases. So I'm here one stitch before I started creating the decrease. So I'm going to place a single crochet into that space and then I'm going to create the chain for the tie. For my tie, I believe I made 60 chains, so I'm going to make 60 chains and then I'm just going to come back down on that chain with a slip stitch into each chain space. Once I get to the bottom of the chain, I'm going to place a single crochet into the next stitch from where I was working before, and then just continue single crocheting all the way along, all the way across the back neckline, and then we're going to come down the opposite side. Okay, so I'm here, once again, one stitch before the decrease, I'm going to place my final crochet, and then make my chain of 60 chains and work back down on it with a slip stitch. And then when I come down to the end, finish my slip stitches and secure it with a single crochet into the next stitch the same way we did on the other side. And I'm going to finish single crocheting all the way along until I get to the starting corner. And now I'm down here at my beginning. I'm just going to place one more single crochet and then I'm going to place my final single crochet into the same space where I started. So that space should have two single crochets so that we can come around the corner nicely. And then we're just going to secure it with a slip stitch into the original single crochet. And then all that's left is weaving in the ends and the cardigan is finished. Thank you guys for watching, hopefully you enjoy this tutorial and try it out. Let me know what you think and we'll catch you guys next time.